So, I was going to make a video for my DIY channel today. If you're not subscribed there, go check that out. Got some great stuff. But then HP decided to step in and say, uh, no, you're not. And gave me this. Oh, yes. This is the new HP Envy X360. But not the normal one. The model with the AMD Bristol. It's not. That was going to be great. No, epic moment. Whatever. Anyways. It has the new 7th gen AMD Bristol Ridge APU. Specifically the FX9800P. That's the, the processor. It has four CPU cores clocked at 2.7 GHz, but that can go up to 3.6 GHz in turbo mode. As well as eight Radeon R7 cores. So, I did a little research, and before we begin, I did buy the laptop. It just came in early. But yes, I paid for it. But this is not a laptop review. This is the benchmark for Bristol Ridge, because I saw online there's nothing. I mean, there's a lot of things announcing, oh yeah, AMD's new Bristol Ridge APUs, it's so cool, man, and there's gonna be an HP laptop. It's mine. Anyways. But I don't see any benchmarks for it. So I'm gonna do it myself. So here's how I did it. I have six tests. Three CPU tests through Ida64. I have CPU Zlib. FPU Julia and FP64 Ray Trace. So that's uh, three to show a kind of even separation, you know, kind of show the CPU performance. And then I did three GPU bound benchmarks because this does have, technically speaking, a dedicated GPU, it has eight dedicated GPU cores. So I tested on CSGO. Minecraft and Unigen Heaven, because those are the two, probably two of the most popular games right now, and they're kind of varying degrees of demandingness. And then Unigen Heaven is a pretty standard GPU benchmark. So here's what I tested. I was originally going to test this against my personal rig right here. I actually made a video explaining this in a in an earlier. Vi I can't talk right now. I'm just excited. This is really cool. But anyways, go check out the video talking about me, my PC. But all you need to know here is it has an AMD FX4350 that's 4 cores at 4.2 gigahertz, And has an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 950. Or so I thought. I originally went through my tests assuming it was a GTX 950. And then I ran Unigen Heaven and saw that it was running at 1500 megahertz. <sighs> this is like 1060 speeds. Because I remembered, I got the ASUS Strix version. So it's factory overclocked. So that kind of uh, put a dent in my plans, and even if it wasn't overclocked, I found it's not really fair. Surprise! The 950 will kick the Radeon R7 in its tush. So I needed something a little more fair. I still went on with the benchmark just to kind of see, because you know, why not? Now the CPU is very fair, I think. They're very, they're within the same range. So I thought, well, really the only way to get a fair benchmark is to see something else in this range, either performance range or price range. I chose price range because A, I have access to something in this price range, and I have no idea how to find something in this performance range because I don't have like 5 million CPUs just lying around my closet. <clears throat> Linus. Anyways. So, uh, although, th as far as I know right now, the only Bristol Ridge CPU you can find is in this laptop. And this is the only laptop, no, I'm kidding, there's more laptops. But this is the only lap, this is the only model computer. So what I did is I took another laptop, also happens from, to be from HP, because we have a lot of HP stuff in the family. But anyways, so I took an HP Pavilion 15T with an Intel Core i5, what was it, 5200U, with integrated Intel HD 5000 or 5500 graphics. I don't know, something crappy like that. So I did, now, this laptop and that laptop are both about $600, a little more, probably more closer, probably a little closer to like 650 
So, you know, same price range, same brand. Although you can tell there are many differences. For example, that's more of a, it's a bulkier laptop, whereas this is a thin convertible. I mean, look at this with its Type C port. So, let's start with the CPU benchmarks. So, I had a 64 CPU Zlib. Uh, my desktop with the 4350 got 179.5. Bristol, the Bristol Ridge APU got 107.5, and the Intel chip got just a little bit more at 113.8. Now moving on to FPU Julia. Now, before we can go any further, just keep in mind that benchmarks tend to favor Intel chips. It's not a favoritism, it's just the AMD chips, AMD CPUs currently have some weird cluster architecture that makes benchmarks not quite work the same. So you can really see the difference, especially on these FPU tests, which are more multi-core and multi-threaded. So just keep that in mind that this comparison is not quite what you will see in real-world applications. I have tried running Adobe Premiere on both the FX4350 and the i5, and there was no competition. The 4350 just smoked it. Even though, according to these numbers, the i5 should be better. Same thing, my old Dell XPS 12 with an i5 3337U do not turn off. With an i5 3337U on paper was supposed to be better, but nope, it got creamed. So just keep that in mind. But anyways, FPU Julia, we got a score of 8533 on the Intel Core. This really shows the, how it shines in the multi-core benchmarks. Benchmarks only, not real world, not real world applications. Um, the Bristol Ridge chip got 4475, and the FX 4350 had 6907. Ida 64 FP 64 Ray Trace was the last CPU bound benchmark I did giving a 966, a whopping 966 to the Intel chip, a 486, a, a respectable 486 to the Bristol Ridge chip, and the 4350 got a 739. Now again, in actual real-world performance, the Intel chip would be less powerful than both of these, but I'm giving you guys the benchmark scores, because, you know, that's what, that's what i64 gave me. So now on to the GPU ones. These show way more real world applications. Now Unigen Heaven was kind of benchmarky, I guess. I'm not quite sure how it would work for GPUs, but let's start with CSGO. So obviously on all of these, the overclocked 950 is going to take the lead by a significant margin. So I'm kind of just putting it in there for the lulls. Or maybe to see if you're actually serious about gaming, maybe you're gonna maybe you'd want to invest into a desktop and get a lower powered laptop. Now I personally want a higher powered both, but whatever. So in CSGO, the minimum max and average, according to Fraps benchmark. On the 950, we got 78 to 175 is the range, with an average of 120 frames per second. Now, this is at 1080p with all the maximum settings, with the exception of the Intel chip, which had to be reduced to medium settings in order to even run more than like 10 seconds per frame. 10 seconds per frame, so, you know, to actually get decent numbers other than just zero, or one, I turned down on the uh, Intel, I turned down the settings on both Minecraft and CSGO. But anyways, the Bristol Ridge chip had a minimum of zero frames, maximum of 79 frames, and an average of 20 frames on CSGO. Now keep in mind this is like ultra hardcore settings. When I turn things down to medium to high, so like Things that are normally high, I put the medium. Things that are normally ultra high, I put them to high. So I just tone things down just a little bit. It is easily within the 40 to 50 range. Playable, no problem. <sighs> now the uh, Intel chip. 
lagged way behind with medium settings, low of 0 and a high of 14. 14! At an average of 11 frames per second. And this is on medium. On low, we'd probably get still worse frames than the Bristol Ridge ship on high. So, CSGO not playable on the i5 5200U. I need a bigger SD card. So anyways, so the 5200U had minimum zero frames. Like, there were moments where it was zero. Although it was only like once or twice. The maximum was 49 frames, so it could not even reach 60. And the average was 20 frames, 20 frames on Minecraft. Now, I don't know, I, did, I forgot to mention this, but I ran all of these on Optifine 1.10.2 with on the maximum settings, so like maximum render distance and everything, except for the i5, which I put some of the settings a little lower. So everything was, I would consider high settings, medium to high settings. And that's how I got these still terrible results. Now the Bristol Ridge chip, on the other hand, on these maximum settings, got again a minimum of zero frames, but that happens from time to time. Maximum of 81 frames and an average of 34. So the only thing I did to go from this to 60 frames is I changed the graphics mode from fast to fancy and I turned down the render distance from about 30 to 20. Visually, there was no difference on the details but you could easily get 60 frames in Minecraft. So that just shows that Bristol Ridge APUs are capable of doing light gaming. Now if you're an intense gamer and you want to do VR and stuff, this is most certainly not for you, because a 950 can cream this thing, and a 950 can't do VR. Okay, well technically my 950 is barely passable according to the Steam VR test, but that's a whole nother conversation. So, again, in game, in both games, the Bristol Ridge chip beats out by a fairly significant margin its similarly priced Intel Brethren. Now, the last benchmark I performed was Unigen Heaven on its just default settings. And I actually got very similar results on both laptops. Now, on my 950, that this is where I noticed that it was saying 1500 megahertz. I got a minimum, uh, let me scroll that, a minimum of 25 frames. A maximum of 120.9 frames, see this one was a lot more um, precise, and an average of 57 frames. So that's actually very good in my book. It's, it's good. It's high settings, because the default settings are high on Unigen Heaven. The Bristol Ridge ship, the 9800P, had a minimum of 4.3 frames, a maximum of 13.9 frames, and an average of 7.6. It was very choppy and obviously not going to be a very enjoyable experience. Oh, right. The score on the 950 was 1436. The score on the 9800P was 169. The score on the Intel chip was 166. With the range 4.1 to 10.8, so that's slightly lower than the 9800P, and an average of 6.6, .6, so 0.1 frames off in average. But, the difference here is the cooling. This is a very thin laptop, and the two cooling spots, which I'll talk more about in my review of this laptop coming soon, so keep an eye out for that, is behind here and on the bottom here. So it's pretty good cooling, but it is still a tight fit because it's a thin laptop. Now on the other, the Pavilion thicker laptop, there are bulky vents on the sides, allowing for ample cooling. and that allowed an occasional peak, but still with that, it lagged behind. So that's all the benchmarks I performed, and I hope that shows kind of how it, where the new Bristol Ridge APUs are, I, I can't talk, I'm sorry, I can't talk, but I hope this gives you a little more information about Bristol Ridge. Now. To generally sum up what Bristol Ridge is, it is supposed to be a bridge between the current AMD chips and Zen. So, if I am not mistaken, it has a 
Polaris GPU, although I do not believe that to be the case, seeing as it's still R7, but it does use the same manufacturing process, that is for sure. But the, the CPU is a normal AMD CPU with the excavator cores or whatever they're called, so they have like a bunch of different construction equipment names. But it also does things that are supposed to be Zen exclusives. For example, the RAM is DDR4-2133, although for some reason Ida64 decided that it was going to run at 1866. Okay. But it's generally supposed to be that bridge. I mean, Bristol Ridge Bridge, I, whatever. That's what it is supposed to, that's what it's supposed to be, and I think it does a very good job. For a, la a mobile chip, it actually is, I would say, pretty on par or pretty competitive with its desktop equivalent. The only place it would lag behind, however, is graphics. But I guess if you get an R7 graphics, cards, graphics card, it would be the same. So overall, very good performance, especially for the price you pay. If you look at the price you pay for an Intel chip, it's weak for that same price. And then you got this beauty, slim beauty with amazing performance for cheap. So that's all for this video, guys. Don't forget to subscribe to see a review of this laptop. I hold it up a lot. I'm in love with this laptop. It's my child now. Um, don't forget to go check out my DIY channel where I do DIY stuff, except not today because HP decided not today. And go subscribe there too if you like my content. Leave a like if you're excited for the new Bristol Ridge and Zen coming out. And leave a dislike if you're an Intel fanboy who thinks that Intel is better no matter what. Even though I, my, 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 I, I just proved that at this price point, Intel just got whooped. So, like, I mean, it's just, the numbers don't lie, man. They don't lie. Leave a comment below telling me, do you think it is worth it? to go with Bristol Ridge, or are you, again, one of the Intel fanboys and you would go with an Intel computer, or do you think it's better to wait till Summit Ridge, which I believe will be Zen? So leave a comment telling me what you think about that. And I guess that's all I have for this video, then. See ya!